Hello, so today we are going to talk about administering medications and in particular our focus will be on non-parental medications. The basic principles that you always follow are you will explain what you're doing before you give any medications, answer any questions that the individual the patient has, involve the patient as much as possible in the process, always provide privacy, Give medication administration your complete attention. Give medication in a quiet area free from distractions and never leave medication unattended, even for a moment. This is very important. And always wash your hands. This is a visual slide showing the six rights of medication administration. It also shows you the forms of medication. For example, it talks about inhalation, solid, and transdermal, and what that is showing you is essentially non-parental forms of medication. Injections, IV medications, intramuscular, subcutaneous, and intradermal are all examples of parental forms of medication. And you can see that in this illustration. Always perform the six rights. Right patient, right drug, right dose, right time, right route, and right documentation. And the three checks. The three med checks are taking the med from the storage and compare it to the uh, MAR, so that medical re uh, medication record. The next check is preparing the med and putting it in the med cup and during this check you are also checking the expiration date on the medication. And then finally, prior to entering the patient's room, you need to ensure that you have the correct patient, know their date of birth, allergies, and also ensure that the therapy is correct. So why are you giving it to this patient? And those are the six rights and three checks. It's important to be aware of the actions and effects of medication. What is the onset of the medication? When does it peak? Trough is when it's at its lowest. Also some more terminology is serum half-life and duration. So looking at dose response, the onset then is the time to produce a response. The peak is when it has its highest effect. The trough would be the mon minimum blood concentration. This is often measured prior to the next dose, and vancomycin in particular is one that you hear a lot of having peaks and troughs. The serum half-life is 50% blood concentration, and it has to do with the drug excretion, and duration is the length of the drug duration. Side effects are predictable, such as dry mouth with an anticholinergic medication or sedation with opioids. An adverse effect is unintended and undesirable and with this you need to of course discontinue the medication. An example would be perhaps a medication is ototoxic so it's toxic to hearing imbalance and there's elevated amounts in the blood. This would be an adverse effect. There can be different medication interactions, especially with polypharmacy. Idiosyncratic are unpredictable reactions. Allergic reactions are when the medication acts as an antigen triggering release of antibodies. It can be mild to complete anaphylactic. Interactions can be synergistic, which is when you see a combined effect greater than separated. So an example of a synergistic effect would be alcohol and Tylenol together increase liver damage. Another interaction would be a diminished interaction where you see a diminished effect, not the intended reaction. Medications are dispensed in a variety of ways. Unit dose, bubble packs, floor stock, ampules, vials, 
MDI tubes and suppositories. Floor stock with that one, over-the-counter meds can be available on a unit outside of the Pixis. So an example of this would be an ammonia inhalant at the bedside or bulk colase. With bubble packs, you will see multiple medications in these bubbles and they're in, um, packed together. During your skills lab, you will see different examples of these also. Some important principles of oral administration. I want you guys to remember that the patient needs to always be sitting up to take meds. Never leave medications at the bedside or unattended. Only give medications you've prepared. You can only cut in half scored tablets to ensure uniform distribution of the med. And extended release and enteric coated are never to be crushed. That coating on them delays the absorption when a patient swallows it. By crushing it, you've altered its metabolism. And another one final thing I want to discuss regarding principles of oral administration is that antacids such as mylanta and milk of magnesia do coat the stomach and diminish medication absorption. So oral medications should not be taken within one to two hours of giving an antacid like milk of magnesia or mylanta. Again, we're reviewing the principles of medication administration and we're looking at the six rights. This is obviously very important. You want to always ensure that you have the right patient. You need to verify the patient by checking his or her identification bracelet or armband. Ask the patient his or her name. Do not call the patient by name. Have them tell you what it is. Also ask for their date of birth. And then check the name on the patient's medication label and also in the uh, MAR. The right drug, you need to check the drug label three times. Again, that's at first contact the medication bottle before pouring the medication, and then again after pouring the medication. Check that the drug order is complete and legible from the physician. If the order is incomplete or not legible, you need to contact the physician to ensure that you're providing the right medication. Know the medication's action, onset, duration. Again, always check the expiration date. And if the patient ever questions the drug, recheck and check again. This is a red flag. With the right dose, be able to calculate the medication dose using the uh, right proportion, the basic formula. Know how to calculate drug doses by body weight. Know the recommended dosage range for the drug. And some facilities require that drugs such as insulin, narcotics, and heparin be checked by another colleague. Ensure that it's the right time. Medication can be given in half an hour before or after the time prescribed. There can be times or special circumstances that may cause a delay or omission of a medication, such as laboratory or di diagnostic tests that need to be done prior to administration. Administer drugs that are affected by foods either one hour before or two hours after meals. And antibiotics should be administered at regular intervals. Ensure that it's the right route. The right route is necessary for appropriate absorption of the medication if that's by mouth, sublingual, buccal, topical, inhalation. And documentation in the MAR, the time the drug was given and the nurse's initials. Documentation should be done immediately. And if the drug was refused by the patient, then their note needs to be placed regarding that refusal in the MAR.
So now we're looking at the parts of a valid medication order, and that requires the patient's name, the date and time, the drug name, the dose, the route, frequency, and signature. The order that you see here essentially is saying give tetracycline 500 milligrams by mouth every six hours. You need an order to give a medication to a patient. Orders can be standing, which is continuous until the doctor cancels it, PRN, which is as needed, a single one-time order, such as a pre-op medication or pre-procedure medication that was administered, STAT, which means immediately, now, which is urgent, but it is not STAT, and the final example is prescriptions, which is in the home environment. Medication dosage strengths are expressed by grams or parts of grams. The dose is the amount of drug taken at any one time. It can be expressed by weight, such as milligrams, volume of a solution, such as 10 milliliters or two drops, or some other quantity, such as two puffs. Another way that dosage can be expressed is in units, and you see that with insulin and blood. So now we're going to look at routes of administration. Enteral is through the GI tract, and that includes the mouth, tube feeding, and rectal. Parental avoids the gut, and that would be injectable drugs, and of course asepsis is very important with this. Topical is applied to a surface of the body. It can be local or systemic as far as what it affects. An example of this would be local something for itching, and systemic would be a nitro patch. Mucous membranes, an example of this would be buccal administration of a medication. Inhalation would be in inhalers, use aerosol, aerosol spray, mist, or powder to, pen, um, to penetrate the lungs. Intrathecal medication is placed into the fluid surrounding the spinal cord, the intrathecal space. Intraosseous is a med injected into the bone marrow. An intrasynovial is, goes into the synovial cavity of the joints. Epidural is injected into the epidural space within the vertebrae of the spinal column. Intravenous is an IV medication. Endotracheal is via a trach, and this is typically only administered emergently. Ophthalmic would be medications given via the eye, and otic are medications given into the ear. Today's focus is going to be on non-parental medications. So that includes oral, ophthalmic, otic, nasal, rectal, special delivery, perhaps that would be like perineal dialysis, inhalation, oxygen, and then also local application, perhaps a lotion or cream. When giving medication, it's important to know how frequently. Medications can be scheduled, as needed, as needed within ranges, such as with insulin, if the blood glucose is 200, then you administer it. STAT means Im immediately, and one time. We've talked about this. Common abbreviations related to frequencies are every other day, every day, BID, TID, QID, every one hour, two hours, four, six, eight, and twelve, etc., and before meals and at hour of sleep. So we will conclude this first um, learning module at this point and um, we'll pick it up in the next presentation.